<clears throat> Got it. Got it. <clears throat> Got it. Woo. Okay. <clears throat> Got it. This is Dr. Doug Willen. Thanks for joining us today. Today I'm at Rising Star Horse Rescue in Connecticut. It's about an hour from where I live. This is my third time here and today I'm back. I'm going to see a few horses today that you'll get to see in coming weeks as separate videos. Rising Star currently has somewhere between 25 and 30 horses and some of them they adopt out. Some get to live their lives here for the rest of their lives. They have both surrender and rescue horses here. They also do riding lessons for children and adults and they have a great volunteer program. So if you are interested in donating to them or getting any of their merchandise, their URL or web link is in the description box below. So check it out. Uh, it's just a beautiful place and I'm glad to be here volunteering again. So um, we have Raisin back. So we did a video with Raisin about a year ago and he's a 17 year old quarter horse mm. and he's wonderful and I like Raisin. So we're gonna do a little, can we work on you today? What do you think about that? What do you say we do a little adjustment? Okay, this is the bail if we need it. He's busy sniffing somebody else's droppings, right? Mm -hmm. Let me just feel him a little bit. Do you know if he was surrendered or was he a rescue? I believe he was an original rescue back yeah. when we were Moonlight. Back when you guys were getting started? Mm-hmm. And how long, this is Sam, how long have you been working here? I've been here for a few months. And what do you do here? Like, cause a you... A little bit of everything. Mm-hmm. And how many hours a week do you think you volunteer? idea it changes every week <laughs> but give me an idea like one hour a week or more like 10 oh, hours a week the whole day. okay all right so I'm gonna start working I'm feeling the space between the atlas and the wing of the ramus of the mandible I'm checking the pole and it's a little sensitive at the pole can I adjust this on you what do you think first let me Massage it a little bit. So I'm holding the pole with my fingertips, putting a little pressure to release it. Let's come back this way. And I might just adjust that. It's high on the right, so he has a right pull, which is basically what I'm feeling is a right posterior atlas. So I'm going to get my head on this side, actually. Hmm. And I'm going to adjust the right superior atlas right now. <clears throat> Got it. And you could see immediately started to lick and chew. Stay to the side, Sam, so it won't block the camera. So now there's the pole. Um, my right, my hands up on the top part here. At his upper cervical. I'm going to step over. Is that okay? And I want to go back and feel this. So now take the camera and follow us a little bit here. I'm going to move him a little bit and then I'm going to feel his neck next. Let's, let's leave this uh, right about here is good. So come around this way and see us from the front. Let me just recheck the work that we just did.
just a little more. Okay. That was a good job. Okay. I'm going to come down the neck. Okay, there's a misalignment at C5 on the left. So I'm gonna do that next. Hey, this is Dr. Doug Willen. This is my Collagen for Horses product. It's 100% collagen. It's American made. You put a little bit in the horse's food every day and you're gonna see a difference in the coat, in the teeth, the hoofs, the connective tissue, muscle ligaments. It's good for that older achy horse, but it's also good for a developing horse that's growing into its adult body. Give it a try. It's right here. First, I'm going to just hold it, let him relax into that. So, I'm going to put my hand up here. Mm. I need him to laterally flex a little to get this. So, uh, just a little bit, Raisin. Can I work with you a little bit? Can I just get this spot on you? Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you. A little more. A little more. A little more. It's going to feel so good when I get this. Good. Now I'm going to adjust it. Got it. Okay, bring him back this way. All right. Let me check what we just did, okay, Raisin? Okay. Still a little bit of a knot here, so let's just finish the, our job, okay? Just a little bit left. A little bit left. Okay, I got it. You feel it. It's a good spot, right? I'm just going to hold that, let that trigger point release, okay? A little bit more, just a little more. And bring your head this way, babe. That's it. Now, let's bring your head up. Mm. Oh, good. Let's bring your head down. Good. It's a rib out right here. Right here is a rib that is up. Here, I want you to feel this, okay? So you're gonna take your hand and slide it nice and soft. You can feel right through your glove, and right here there's a bump. Do you feel it? Mm-hmm. Here, right there, do it again. Right there. Do it again. Can you feel this right here? Mm-hmm. That's a rib that's sticking up. Can you feel it? Mm-hmm. It's between here, so rub your hand through there again. That's the rib right here. Do you feel the ridge? Mm -hmm. Now, so here it's nice and smooth. You can't feel it till you get here. Then there's the bump. Yep. So what we're feeling is you're coming down the rib like this, and they should all feel about the same. But we hit one that goes like this. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. And it would be like this if you were looking at my hand. My hands are ribs. Let me see if I can position it. So this one is sticking up. So it comes down and goes over that rib. 
And so that's when I have to adjust. It's easy for me to find it because it's sticking out. So we got to bring them over to the bell and I'm going to adjust. Now ribs can also rotate. They can uh, uh, rotate cranially or caudally. Cranial is towards the head, towards the cranium. Caudally is towards the tail. And this is, has a cranial component. So it's elevated or posterior or dorsal and also a cranial uh, rotation. And I know how to fix that, so we'll do that now. Bring um, raisin over here. And what you might want to do, uh, Sam, is bring them around and then bring them onto this side, just like I was going to mount. We'll see if this works, right? But I know how to adjust this if I can get my hands on it. But I have to get high enough because he's pretty big. He's a pretty big guy. And he'll like this if we can get it. That might be good enough. Ooh, it's really out. Got it. There's more. I might turn this way. <clears throat> Got it. Woo. Okay. All right, let's see what he says about that. Give him a second. Oh. Here, come feel this. So you come up here where you were before. Mm -hmm. and it's, it's uniform now. Much better. Yeah. You can still feel a little here, can't you, right there? It's very minor though. But I don't know, this is so far away that this one on an older horse is probably not a good idea to thrust into here because now we're down, um, we're just, we're just gonna irritate it. But where I got it up here, I've made a difference where that whole area where the angle changes, I flattened that out and made it uniform again. So now we're going to come down and we're going to start checking the different spinuses. You can see me working them. I'm, I'm going like this. And he's okay. I mean, he's licking just me touching him like this. Do you know? See, he's pretty tall. And there we go here. The glute is a little tight here, the hamstring. So he's got a very tight hamstring on the left. Let's see if there's one on the right. Both hamstrings are tight. So let me just do one at a time. So here's the hamstring, I'm specifically on the semi-membranosus and I'm feeling in between the fibers trying to get my finger into that worst spot, the trigger point. I'm just wiggling them at the same time because that shimmy is going to help, help relax him and get that hamstring to release. There we go. Now I'm down the semi-membranosus, semi-tendinosus. My hand's right up in there. Good, it's starting to soften up now. Fingers are still in there, so I'm under the tail with my forearm and using his body weight a little bit. Now let's do the other side. This side's even tighter, so now I'm on the right side. I'm back here, okay, buddy? And my fingers are now on the semi-tendinosis on this side. The, the medial band is fine. It's the lateral band on his right side that I need to work. And I'm massaging, coming down the fibers, 
and he knows what I'm doing. I'm watching his ears. They're pretty relaxed. Mm. Coming down now. Pretty tight though. The quads are up here. Now the quads, you know what's interesting is his quads are um, a little hypo hypotonal or a little undertoned. His hamstrings are hypertonal or excessively toned or tight. So um, I think he's got an ilium out too, and I have to figure out what side. Come around this side for a minute, and he's low on the right, so I'm going to probably set the uh, AS ilium, and, and we'll do that next. We'll just follow him around. So, hey, listen, I'm going to, Raisin, hey, I'm going to work on your right AS ilium. It's come a little ventrally, and I'm going to set right up, and we can see that leg. We wait till he lifts it. There we go, that's a good spot there. I'm gonna come under here. There you go, let that go. This is a tender spot for him. <clears throat> Got it. Come around, you'll see, he's licking already. You know? You okay? So let's look at the rear end again. And that side's almost higher now. But it feels very level. Good, I like what I see there. That's really good. Good, so we just leveled out the ilium, which levels out, meaning the pelvis. And he's licking like crazy, isn't he? Mm -hmm. So if you see him, he's just licking and licking and licking. Now... He's lifting the tail a little bit. He might be ready to let go his own droppings now. But we'll see what happens. Let's go back to where we had some room. He's walking fast. Let him run it out if he wants. And you can bring him back again. So I just did the right AS ilium. I did the rib. But I think I want to get back on the box and look at his sacrum. So let's go back to the box. If you can, you walk him right past me. <laughs> he doesn't want to come. Come on. Good work, Sam. Have you worked much with Raisin before? Very little. Very little, right? All right, Raisin, I'm going to come up here and do my job. So he has a... Base posterior sacral, sacral base posterior left. <sighs> Got it. So the sacrum came up and elevated on the left side. The set of his tail is a little tense now. I don't know if people could see that. So he's probably stressing a little bit, wondering what I'm doing. I moved that back end a lot. Um, now he just relaxed his tail. But for a little bit, and I've been watching it for a while, but for a little bit the tail was kind of tense. Can you see my hand? So it's instead of it hanging nice and loose, it was pulling up like that. And that's not good. That's stress. But look, it just relaxed now. I set the ilium. I set the sacral base. Now, it could be doing that because he's ready to do some droppings, but um, he had that tail a little tense for a while without, is a pattern of tension. But the rest of him, look, his top line's nice and relaxed. His head is dropped. He's uh, not getting much grazing, but he's in a grazing mode. Um, he, uh, he had a little shift, which is good. I don't know if we're going to do much more on him today. I, I'm learning to do less rather than more. And what I mean by that is with animals, dogs, well, all the different animals I work on, but 
you know, horses for sure, you do some, you leave it alone. It's a, it's a process. You can always come back and check them again. But if you overdo it, you just try to adjust everything or you just try to work on everything, that's too 